we're opening a new book, the book of Shmot, and that at the beginning of the book, there's a listing of all of the patriarchs here, not Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, but the patriarchs in the sense of the Bnei Yaakov, the Bnei Yisrael. And Rashi at the first, at the outset of this section of the Torah tells us even though they were already counted in their lifetime, that now that they had passed away, they were being remembered in retrospect in order to show how beloved they were in the eyes of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. to show how beloved and dear they were. They were the allegory, they were compared to stars that are taken out and brought back in their number as the Pasuk describes, God takes them out in their legion and he calls each one by a name. And the idea that the title section of the challenging story of Shibud Mitzrayim is actually first recalling the names. You could almost say it's like a memorial plaque that was put on the wall that everyone should see. So it's written at the top of the book so that we'll recognize that we are not the first ones who encounter challenge in our lives and in the world around us and as Jews and as Americans. I'm thinking tonight on the Shloshim of Maran Harav Gedalia Dov ben Avram, Zechat Tzadik Livracha, Rabbi Gedalia Dov Schwartz, who was and remains for me and for many Rabbanim around the world, a lodestar, not only for his great uh, Torah knowledge, but for his great wisdom, for his unbelievable sensitivity, for his piety. There's a Gemara in Masachet Rosh Hashanah that points out that actually in each generation, there are leaders who are meant to parallel leaders from previous generations. Yerubal Bedoro, Kemosha Bedoro, Bedan Bedoro, Ke'aron Bedoro, Yiftach Bedoro, Kishmuel Bedoro. Says the Gemara, Amdecha Shafil Kal Shabakalin, Ritmane Panas Al Tzibor, Haril Ke'abir Sha'abirim, Shaba'avirim. At the moment that an individual might be the lightest of the light is uh, appointed to be a leader, right away they have to become mighty. Uvata, the Gemara goes on to say, Uvata le Kohanim Halavim ve'al Shofet asher yeh bayami ma'em. You shall go to the Kohen and the Levi and the judge that are in your time. Did you think you could have a case adjudicated by a judge who's no longer alive, who's left the world? You should go to the judge that is in your day and seek counsel with that judge. As the verse, the Pasuk from Sefer Kohala teaches, don't ask yourself wistfully with a sense of nostalgia that what has come of the days, the early days were much better than they are today. Rather, take yourself in hand and find guidance wherever it can be found. On the day that Moshe Rabbeinu first went out to see his brethren and he saved a Jew from the clutches of an enemy, no doubt there could have been a Jew standing on the side saying to him, where were you yesterday? And where were you 10 years ago? And how come you didn't speak up then? Sad to say, but it was only one day later that the two Jews fighting each other decided to put Moshe in his place and ask him, who made you the Sar Shofet Aleinu? Who made you the minister and the judge? And then Moshe left for 60 years. And when I think of Rav Schwartz, he was an individual who, wherever he went, you knew that you were dealing with an individual of great sagacity, but also of great sensitivity. And therefore, there was a certain respect that he commanded in words that he spoke, and the judicious manner in which not only he rendered, obviously, his piske din, but also the manner in which he was able to interact with others and to say his piece as he understood it. Lahavdil between judges and judges. Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. is credited with coining the phrase, shouting fire in a crowded theater. This happened already before 1920. It was coined as part of a legal judgment to curb freedom of speech when it could lead to imminent panic 
riot, or violence. While experts in American law may debate the finer points of its applicability to what happened in our nation's capital yesterday, from a Torah perspective, we maintain Adam Muad Le'olam. A person is always forewarned, so says the Gemara in Bavakama and Dav Chavav, meaning they are always held responsible for their actions. The rioters yesterday, endowed with full moral agency, bear full responsibility for their actions. At the same time, the violence yesterday did not emerge from the ether. It was stirred up from the breath of speech that emanated from President Trump and others in his inner circle that moved from fervor to passion to zealotry, openly charging the crowd to fight, to engage in, quote, trial by combat, end quote, and then by an open call to march to the Capitol. Moi Virabi, Rav Yehuda Amital, Zechit Tzadik Livracha, notes that in the beginning of the, the first Mishnah, the opening Mishnah, Masachat Bavakama, it lists damagers. A human being is not called Adam in that Mishnah. There's a shore, there's Bor, and then there's Mave and Hever. Mave refers to the human being. Why, asks Rav, Rav Amital. And he answers, because the word Mave is from a Pasuk in Navi, which means one who seeks, and one who seeks through prayer. The hallmark of our humanity is our capacity to pray. And I would only add that this focus on our faculty of speech in a list of damagers also serves to underscore the power and the attendant responsibility vested in our speech. A violent mob descended upon the US Capitol yesterday and the image of the horde racing, climbing, smashing, invading, shook us all to the core. Beyond the sadness and the outrage now, uh, we can already throw yet another item onto the big pile of horrendous events we've come to label as unprecedented of the past many months. A sitting president, abetted by various members of his inner circle, used their platform to incite a violent mob to invade the seat of their own government unprecedented. The assault on the Capitol bespeaks a wanton disregard for the processes by which the democratic system itself functions. This is mainly true, of course, of the perpetrators themselves. It is also true of those who incited them. Yesterday in our nation's Capitol, the fire of incitement was lit. It was stoked. It was inflamed by the president himself. Yes, President Trump deserves our thanks for the great things that he did to advance the U.S.-Israel relationship in so many positive ways. And yes, yesterday he poured gasoline again on a smoldering fire of our body politic that we pray will not lead our country toward disaster. These two are not contradictory statements. They can both be true statements. Following Mincha and Shul, and for those who were joining us on Zoom yesterday, we recited two chapters of Tehillim, and both of which I feel are appropriate now as immediate visceral reactions for us as Ovde Hashem, who see the events of the world, whether they are that which is embedded in nature and even those that are embedded in the world of politics and in human interaction, as sourced in some kind of grand plan that we have a hand in. And therefore, at each and every turn, our reaction is to look heavenward first. You can feel free to recite these chapters of Tehillim anytime as part of processing these traumatic events. The first chapter is chapter 120, Kufchaf. The chapter is a cry of pain about the abuse of language, about the distortion of truth, and about incitement. Shira Ma'alot, a song of a sense, in my distress, El Hashem, Betzarata Li Karati Vayaneni. In my distress, I called to Hashem, and he answered me. Hashem, Hashem, deliver my soul from lying lips from a deceitful tongue. It goes on. What shall be given unto you, and what shall be done unto thee, you deceitful tongue? Rashi, on this passage, points out that the tongue is surrounded by teeth and lips, and yet it has such trouble being constrained. Further along in the same chapter, 
Woe is me that I sojourn with Meshech, that I dwell with the tents of Kedar. My soul has had enough of dwelling with those who hate peace. I am for peace, but when I speak, they are for war. How easy it is to think of oneself as the I am for peace and to look to the other and say they are for war. But to me, this chapter of Tehillim is about an individual who actually recognizes that sadly, the words spoken and the words as they are heard are sometimes at a distance from each other. And a cry of pain, therefore, about the abuse of language. And so chapter 120, a cry of pain, a cri de coeur, a cry from the heart about what has become of speech. Chapter 133, affirming the vision of harmony, of brothers dwelling together in peace. It's actually a chapter that's sourced initially in Parshat Shmot. Shir Hamal David, Matov Manaim Shevet Achim Gam Yachad, a song of ascents of David. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And then it goes on to say, Kashem Natov Al Arosh Yored Al Zakan Zakan Aaron. It's like the oil that's coming down the beard of an anointed Aaron that's falling upon the collar of his garments, Al Pimi Dotav. The idea here is Moshe and Aaron, two brothers who could find in their hearts simcha for each other. Racha v'samach b'libot, says Hashem to Moshe at the snap. Aaron will see you. He will be happy in his heart. And this idea that we can affirm a vision of harmony, that we can still say we believe that it's possible for brothers, brethren, to dwell together in peace is so crucial at a time when so much feels to so many people that it's hopeless. The Torah reminds us that it is not hopeless that it is possible to make things right and to fix them. And it starts with us. In addition to the Bain Adam Lamakum element of tefillah, it may sound so obvious, but I think we take a lesson from the events of yesterday, each of us right here in our community, to be able to redouble our own efforts to avoid hurtful language, whether that language is expressed verbally or whether it's being written out digitally in our relationships, to be wary of vilifying those who do not share your same political views, whatever your individual views. Every individual ought to recognize we are still all bound to the same code of conduct as prescribed by the Torah. We are all designated as the mav'eh, one who seeks, and we are equally called the mav'eh to take notice and to take care that we are also sure that our words are not going to cause great damage. Let's hope and pray that we'll soon be zochim to hear better news on all levels to achieve a more peaceful time. This work begins with us. And I hope and pray that uh, we'll be able to look to this new book, the opening of the book of uh, Shmot, and to see the process, the Sefer HaGalut V'Hagilulah, says the Ramban, a book of exile and of redemption. Klal Yisrael believes that it's possible to make things better in our tefillah to Hashem to help us, but also in the manner in which we conduct ourselves with others. I want to wish everyone a peace-filled Shabbat to restore a sense of equanimity and equilibrium. And God willing, as we're going into this Shabbat also, each of us who is Zoha to know and to see and to interact with Maran of Gedaid of Schwartz, to see that it is possible to reach a very high height of piety and also of scholarship. And to recognize that hopefully from Shamayim, he serves as a Melitz Yosher as it were, an advocate for us on high, and that his legacy should continue to shine, like the great stars in the sky of the tribes, in order to speak about how the affection that Hashem has for them, but also the affection that we have for them. Shabbat Shalom.